there's she's, so many good shows. So much on right Welcome now. Welcome like, to TV like Corner. Oh my god. Okay, what do you guys want to start with? I well, literally have watched so much that I don't even know what is the most exciting thing that I've watched. I have two. I'm like trying to what? Limit it I'm to like two. here. Okay, Devin, you say what your two are. Um. Okay. Well, there are three. I just finished Dead to Me last night, the last season. Oh, don't tell me anything. I'm like, I, I think I'm like, wait, like two the one that came in. out yesterday. It came out on Friday. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the Judgment, yes. Maggie. There are only ten episodes, and they're only thirty minutes long. Hey, you know I don't judge for bin- binging. Very I good. I love. It's like Grace and Frankie, except younger people, kind of like I just love a good show about a female friendship like that. Yeah. Um, A League of Their Own on Amazon Prime. Oh wait, so the old show? It's a new show. It's a well, it was oh. a movie with Tom Hanks, but they made a TV show out of it. Same thing. Wait, the one about the Cardinals? No, women. So it's during World War II, and since all the men are away at war, women start playing baseball. Wait, they made a oh show. My God, that's out of so the cool. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I had no idea. I love that movie. It is the show is so freaking good. Like I was sobbing throughout the last episode because of how good it was. Like I was just like, this is so good. Oh it's my on gosh. Prime. Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. That's such a good idea for them to make a show out of it. Yeah, it's so good. I haven't. And it has a girl from movie, a good but... place. Yes, she is amazing, and also Abby from Broad City. Cute. All right, I'm definitely gonna watch that. Oh it's my god, you need to watch the movie, good. Devin. Cute. Okay, watching that, screenshotting it, and then I keep hearing people talk about uh, the sex lives of college girls. Oh, that so is, what I, I just started that. Oh my god, it's I so watched like six episodes, so on you. and I'm like so happy the new season came out. Like I've been waiting for it. Yeah. Do you like it so far, Devin? Oh yeah, it's so good. It's just like. I don't know. I feel like it's just so like reminiscent of like all the different things that like happen in college. The all girls the characters are so, funny. Are so cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that the one girl that like tries to sleep with as many people as possible or like she's trying to get boyfriends and stuff. I'm yeah. Only, like, Indian girl. Seven. Yeah. She's so cute. Also, it was, it's like produced by Mindy Kaling. That's why it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. It's um, good. That's like one of my, that was like, one of the ones I was like most excited about that came out. Cute. Um, which okay, means I have to keep my HBO Max subscription for I, I don't think know how long. HBO has all the Christmas movies right now too. Oh, oh really? and White Lotus <gasps> on HBO Max. Okay. I need to start White Lotus. Everyone I like, talks about it. I'm still trying to get into Severance. Like I'm kind of into it, but like, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm like work. I I watched a couple more episodes. Okay. Good. I can't um, say I did that. White Lotus? I don't know. What episode does it get good in? Um, I thought it was immediately good. Like, I was just intrigued by the characters and the setting and stuff. Yeah. I'll try more. I'll keep watching. <laughs> but there's also so many other good shows right now that I'm like... Yeah. Struggling. Okay, so what was the other one that you were so excited about? Yellowstone. Oh, mm-hmm. my mom is going to love you saying that. She's been trying to convince me to watch shows. Oh, my God. From- yeah, okay, I'm not into shows thing. like that. You don't like shows like that? I'm not into shows like that. What part? Like, just the, like, drama or, like, the... I guess the setting. Oh. Okay. The old timiness? Yeah. It's, like, I new. Feel that's why. It's, like, new timey. I thought it was set in, like, old Western times. No. It's, like, current oh. day. Oh. I did not think that. I thought it was like in the shootout days. Me too. <laughs> no. It's like current day. Like they're trying to save like Montana's land. Oh. Or like okay, their land well. in Montana. Like they're trying to preserve their ranch that they've had oh. for like a few de- generations. Like three that generations. That's not what I thought it was. There are a lot of shows like that that I need to watch and I have not. Yeah. I mean, now that you know it's not set in the old times like does it kind (laughs) of change a little bit yeah there is a there is like a prequel i think it's called a prequel yeah that they came out with so maybe that's what you were thinking it's like wait what is that called 1886 or something oh that's like no idea that that was the same thing but they're they're very different okay interesting the first couple seasons are like the best of yellowstone this one like is good, but there's like a few things I'm like, meh. 
but mm-hmm. I'm okay. still very excited nonetheless. Um, a movie that I really liked and just watched is Confess Fletch. Never uh, heard of it. What is it on? It's on Amazon Prime, I think. Amazon Prime is making some good movies lately, I feel like. Yeah. Um, and it's about this guy. Let me think about it. I'm like getting my storylines confused. Um, <laughs> Too many things. What the fuck did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he like is being like framed for something that he didn't do oh. um, throughout the show. And yeah, so it's a very good movie. That's interesting. And it's with uh, John Hamm. Mm. I oh, like I think my mom was also just talking about that, to be honest. She said something yeah. about John Hamm. Um, Dead to Me was the other one that I was like just super excited about. Yeah, um, I love them. Both. I only watched the first season of it. Really? You should yeah, but this. I remember liking it. Yeah. Wait, so are there three seasons now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's three. Okay. Um, I really like Fixer Upper, and they just yeah, me too. They bought this castle, and I've been watching that. It, yeah, I did not see so that. Good. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I that's think on all the HBO? episodes are out now. That one's also on HBO. Yeah. HBO oh, is really honestly killing idea. it right now. I know. Now. They're having their their moment. And then Great British Bake Off just finished, and it was so good. Oh, my good God. Movie. Yes. I watched yeah. that, too. That was, was so a good, good. ending. I, yeah. this, the one reason I love Great British Bake Off is that, like, there's not, like, any cattiness and, yeah. like, weird drama. Like, there's obviously, like, suspense and drama, like, within each episode. But, like, it's just a feel-good show. And, mm-hmm. like, all of the contestants, like, are very supportive of each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, really, like, I think that they are genuinely excited when somebody wins, like, Star Baker. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it is a just film. good It TV. feels always Christmassy. I don't know why the Great British Break Off, like, always feels Christmassy to me. <laughs> it does kind of, doesn't it? They do it have just- a Christmas, like, series. Yeah, I oh, started that, yeah, and it's, like, celebrities baking, and there's, like, a different celebrity each episode. British celebrities? Yeah. So, like, people that I don't really know. And really? Yeah. I thought it was or just at least what I started seasons. watching. Maybe it is a mix of people. No, because they all sucked at baking. Like, all of their stuff wasn't oh. very good. Or at least what I started watching was like that. Oh. Well, they the winners don't all go on like it's just people like random people from like the past season so some of the stuff like wasn't stellar (laughs) Hmm. yeah because it wasn't like the winners but yeah interesting um this weekend we watched jonah hill's new documentary on netflix about his therapist interesting nuts um the guy's name is phil stutz and it was so good. Like, really? everybody needs to watch it immediately. Like, would have never guessed. Basically, the whole premise is well, this guy is a therapist to a lot of celebrities. Like, I looked it up and, like, his net worth is pretty high because <laughs> he works with a lot of celebrities. So, Jonah Hill is like, you know, when you have problems and you go to your friends to talk about them and you just want them to listen and they give you stupid advice. And then you go to your therapist and you want them to give you advice and they just listen. And you're like, what the fuck? (laughs) Um, So this guy Stutz, his whole thing is like he wants people in therapy. He tells you what to do and like wants people to feel hope even from just one therapy session, like to kind of be able to have these tools and work through the things throughout life. So like the documentary talks about his life, but then it talks about like these certain tools that he teaches through therapy. And they were just so good. Like, I feel like I need to watch again and take notes on the different tools. And, like, I hope they make a sequel immediately and that he can, like, broadcast these things to everyone. Because I think they are so helpful. Wait, what is it on? Netflix. So... And is it a series or a... It's just a movie. Okay. A little documentary. It wasn't that long. Is Jonah Hill in it? Or it's Uh just about Jonah Hill's therapist? Jonah Hill's interviewing the therapist the whole time. Like, it's Uh very chill. They're just sitting down talking to each other the whole time. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's an interesting format for a documentary. Yeah. Like, he was like, I thought I was maybe stupid for making a documentary about my therapist. (laughs) But it was so good. Like, I and I'm sad because it's not on the top 10 of Netflix. And I'm like, it needs to be watched. 
now it's going to be <laughs> because of this podcast. Yep. In our far We're going to blow Jonah it up. Jonah going to write in and be like, <laughs> welcome Thank Jonah so Hill. for sharing <laughs> my documentary. <laughs> That's hilarious. I also, as a side note, I feel like we should like compile lists of TV shows and movies and documentaries and stuff. We should. And like make them a highlight on our Instagram because <laughs> that's our first highlight. <laughs> it's something I'm like always like when I'm like in a lull of TV shows, like I, I always forget about White Lotus. I know I need to like watch it again, but like if it was like on our highlight, I'd be like, oh, here's another good show to watch. Or like I haven't watched this or that. Yeah. And I always forget about the good shows that I watch too. So it, yeah. it's nice. Like I'm starting a list so that I can remember the good shows. Like they, you know how they have a uh, good reads, the app to like yes. keep track yeah, of all they the books. Do they need a TV shows. show. On. Should they we invent do. one? Oh yes. my God. Yeah. I, they do have one for movies. They do. But, but TV I forget shows what it's are like, they are the they biggest are entertainment. Oh my gosh. Wait, let's invent it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe my cousin can develop it for us. Okay, get on that, cousin, please. <laughs> um, the other thing I watched this weekend was the Enchanted sequel, Disenchanted. Oh, it was so didn't know that was out. Cute. Is it that on Disney? So Plus? What is it? Yeah. Enchanted What's the original? with Amy Adams and Patrick <gasps> Dempsey. I love that movie. I love it. I, oh, it's such a good movie. <laughs> it's so cute, and the sequel lives up. Like it's just as good. There's the all little squirrel back. in it. Yes, Pip okay, is good. in it, and <laughs> that's. Um, I rewatched the proposal, like mm-hmm. makes my heart so happy. I love yeah, that I movie. saw it. I like want to watch it again already. It's just like so good. Do they make like rom coms like that anymore? No. no, except Bros was really good. The new oh, one. Oh god, I was, forgot. Um, I want to see that. It was good. It, well, who's that? The director. He's like the one that did like Billy on the Sarah street? Marshall. Oh, Judd oh, Apatow. Yeah, yeah Judd Apatow. He's the guy that created it or whatever so he made a lot of those other like really popular ones and Locked i think up. that one lived up it was very good and i liked just having a gay rom-com yeah did you see um the jennifer lopez one? Oh yeah i didn't love that it wasn't like i was like really hoping it would be like a Wedding planner, like an old Jennifer Lopez. Oh, like I old love her old Jennifer movies. Lopez rom com, Monster in Law. Yeah, they so. just don't make them like that anymore. No, but Disenchanted like, was good. Like it lived up. Like it was. It oh had God, all I'm the so same excited. things that you love about Enchanted. And we watched Enchanted before it because Cameron never saw the first one. So we watched it, and it was just so cute. You know the part where it's like, "We shall be married in the morning." <laughs> <laughs> After she meets the prince, I love it. What? It- Leap year is another. Aren't they Leap both? Leap year is so cute. Them, aren't they both in that too? Wait, is it? Pa- no, I don't think it's Patrick Dempsey. Well, maybe it is. For some reason, I can't picture the guy in that. Neither can I. I thought it was Patrick Dempsey. It very well could be. I don't know. Oh, it's Matthew Good, Adam Scott, Adam Scott. That's the one I was thinking. Interesting. Oh. Never mind. It's a similar looking guy, but it's Amy Adams. I love Amy Adams. She's so Glass great. Onion's great another princess. one I'm excited about. That comes out on November 23rd. Have you Glass seen what? Glass Onion? Glass Onion. It's like another one of those like mystery whodunit type of things. Oh, a show? I've heard of that. It's a movie. Streaming or in theaters? Oh, it's in theaters. It's on Netflix December 23rd. Oh, interesting. There's a lot of good shows coming out in December, too. So we'll really need to make that highlight. Yeah, we will. Oh, my God. I'm so excited about TV now. Me, too. Okay, last one I watched. Wait, you uh-huh. go first. I well, I was just going like to say, <laughs> I just found out. Well, my sister just found out and told me that, you know, the Santa Claus movies? I just saw that. <laughs> The TV show? I just saw a preview a TV and I show? show myself. Yeah. I'm when is it so come out? I'm excited to watch it. I think it's, is it out already? I don't know. It's either soon or it's already out on Disney Plus. Yeah. And it has Bernard. It has all the same people. Is I'm really? so excited. Santa Claus. Santa Claus to me beats Elf or any other Christmas movie. Yeah, yet. because it's so well done and like the North Pole and like the whole Santa thing is just so perfect. I love those movies. It's perfect. And mm-hmm. Charlie was so cute. Oh my god! That was yeah. one of my first crushes. I really love the second one too. Me too. 
So I'm excited TV about that show. <laughs> Where does it? Good. Where is it out on? Disney I think Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh, that made me so excited. Yeah, me that is too. so excited. I want to try to like space it out. Maybe like watch one a week or something for Christmas. <laughs> He's yeah. so happy when I tell him this. He does like a every year. He like just kind of like cycles through the Christmas movies like yeah. all December. Like he'll watch like one every single night. And just That's keep, so like, yeah. fun. I love that. I saw this couple say that they have a tradition of starting Thanksgiving. I think it's Thanksgiving or maybe two weeks before up till Christmas. They watch one Harry Potter movie. Oh, every I like that. Week. And so I was cute. like, that's so cute because Harry Potter is one that feels so like fall yeah. Christmassy Christmas vibe. Yeah, it does. Okay, the my Ted last Lasso Christmas episode is so good too. Oh, oh yeah, I thought you were saying there was a new something Ted Lasso. I was like, about <laughs> oh, I wish. Oh my god, I was like a Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. That's like more more TV shows should do that. Like just like a little like Christmas episode. Have you guys seen the new Lindsay Lohan one? Yeah, it was, I watched I it in it. Tucson. It was cute. It was very Hallmarky, but like in a cute, good, cheesy way. I've been meaning to watch it. Yeah, same. I liked it. Um, but the documentary I watched is called God Forbid. Okay. And it's about these like leaders, the owner, he's like the president of this Christian university, Liberty something, Liberty College. I had never heard of it. I thought GCU was like the biggest Christian college. <laughs> Apparently there's like this other huge one and he's like, he's the president and he was like the guy who invented the school's grandson or son, something. Um, so he's like there, he's married and him and his wife are like these head evangelical Christians. that are like very high up in everything. And um, they go on vacation and there's this 19 year old pool boy. And the mom starts, like, hitting on him. And she's like, yo, come back to my room. I'm trying to, like, hook up with you. She's like, the only catch is my husband's going to watch us. And he's (gasps) like, okay. (laughs) So he goes and does it. And they end up, like, having years-long relationship. And, like, this kid is, like, hangs out with their family, hangs out with their kids. And, like, the kids just think that they're, like, helping out a college student since they're so involved and, like, college anyways like I don't know they just thought they were helping him out they helped him start a business like they fully bought him a restaurant bar thing it's so crazy and then it goes back into like them backing Trump for the election and like just how much like underground stuff there is with those people and like how there's like an image that they put out to the public and then like everything that goes on behind closed doors Mm -hmm. it was so interesting wow that's crazy that is really nuts it was pretty good. It was very long, though. It was, like, definitely, like, two hours, but worth it. There's a TV show that basically, like, does, like, a par- more of, like, a parody of that. Oh, really? Righteous um, Gemstones? Yeah, Righteous yeah. Gemstones. <laughs> Did you see it, Deb? Uh-huh. Do you like funny. it? Yeah, Wait, it was funny. is that the Julia Fox thing? <laughs> no, Uncut Gems. Uncut oh. Gems. <laughs> Uncut Gems. <laughs> I know I get those confused. Yeah, that's so interesting. That's funny. What's the Jonah Hill documentary called? Stutz, S T U T Z, I think. Amazing. Yeah, out of all the things I said, pick Stutz. Okay. I think out of all the things I said, um, a league of their own for me. Okay, okay. (laughs) I'm actually excited about that, but you need to watch the movie. But maybe you won't like it because it does feel older. What? Well, I'm not like against 80s films Time or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I just don't really like westerny stuff. Neither do I. I I don't even know if I would call it westerny, but it's I don't know, like country Montana. I didn't even know it was Montana, so I guess it's called Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, <laughs> that Oops. would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> um okay any other ones we're at 20 no. minutes so that's pretty perfect pretty perfect <laughs> all right well welcome back to another episode of so glad we're friends i'm maggie i'm devin i'm Brittany. okay so today we are going to be doing 
the 36 questions to fall in love. Um, basically, if you haven't heard of this, New York Times, I think they were the first ones to release it. I don't know who came up with the questions, to be honest. But they are a list of 36 questions. And apparently, if you sit down with even a stranger and go through these 36 questions, you can fall in love by the end of them. So we're going to see if we all fall in love today. <laughs> But really just like get to know each other better. So just there's this little thing in here. And it's so the 36 questions are developed by in the 1990s by psychologist Arthur Aaron and Elaine oh, perfect. Aaron and Thank other you. researchers to see if two strangers can develop an intimate connection just from asking each other a series of increasingly personal questions. Love that. And uh, yeah, we're not going to be doing all 36 of them because that would be a long time. Um, so they do get like increasingly more like deeper, but we're just going to kind of do a random number generator and hop back and forth between each of the questions. <laughs> I used to like when I would talk to boys in high school and stuff, I would like do this with them. Like I would try to get them to do it. <laughs> 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 Wait, can you explain how you would do this? <laughs> Would you just like casually just start the day of the conversation of given the choice of anyone in the world? <laughs> no, no, no. Like I would say there's this list of questions. Like I would explain it. You would explain. And you're going to fall in love with me if I answer all of them. Yeah. Things. Or like we're going to get to know each other better. I mean, it worked every time. <laughs> they, they became your boyfriend right away. Yeah. Straight up. I'm not kidding. It's I'm probably I didn't do it with Cameron. So. Devin, I feel like you should try this on Hinge next time. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's like set one, two, and three, but they're all all like one through twelve. So like how should we wait? Can like we just start we with just start set one? Oh, because they're sets. Yeah, let's do like it's yeah, do each set. Like, like a two couple from, from each, each set? set. Yeah. Okay. And then should we each answer the question? Yeah, like let's rotate who asked the question, but we all answer it. Okay. And Dev wants to have three passes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wait, do we all need the random number generator? Sure. But it's just through 12 then? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go first? Let me just right? generate them and then I'll say the number and then we can just rotate through. Sure. Yeah, that works. Whatever. Okay, six. Okay, do you want to read it or you want Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30 year old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? Definitely body. What? I would say body because I would hope that my mind like changes over time. Like exactly. I would like my like mind I to would hope my mind to be evolve. better. Yes. At 90, I might have Alzheimer's. Who knows? See, like, that's a scary decision to make because my great grandma has dementia and it's just like the most sad thing. It's horrible. And she always just says that she wants to go move in with her parents. She wants to go back home and see her mom. And like, she's just reverting back to like a six year old or something. Yeah, you know? no, it's not. And she's like living alone and it's so sad. Like, I would rather, I mean, I have a lot of anxiety right now. But I would love to know that my mind is still going to be like this at 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess my thought would be that, like, if I was in that place, that I would just be so out of it that I wouldn't even really realize. But then I guess what does a body, like, having a good physical well, body really do for you? A good physical body. If your mind mean is. that you could, like, be more, you wouldn't have as many, like, issues. Yeah, but, like, if your mind is fully gone. Because I was thinking, but, like, oh, I'd have, like, I'd be smarter and more wise and then just have a 30-year-old body and be able to move. You could still do a lot of things to maintain your body. Like, obviously, you would still have aches and pains and stuff, but you could still, you know, keep yeah. up with working out and, like, trying to not just be a cripple in a wheelchair, you know? Like, true. true. I always wanted things to live to 100 and, like, be on that muckers thing you know on like the today show where they <laughs> show the people who turned over 100 uh -huh. but now i'm like damn that's a long time it is a long time i don't think it's that long i mean i'm sure it'll go by fast but like when you're 90 like i haven't met a lot of active or like capable 90 year olds yeah so then it's like you have to live like 15 years 
like almost bedridden. I just don't like that. That makes me very scared. Yeah. Okay. Next question. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> uh, seven. Do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Jesus. I do not. I love that this is the first set. <laughs> I know. What the hell? <laughs> you don't? No. I am terrified of cancer, so. I agree. I always I hope I, I don't die, die of that. cancer or a car accident. But I thought I would have already died by this point or like definitely 25 or 26. So I guess there is some more time for it to come true. But it's probably just my anxiety. That really anxiety scares. makes you think you would have died by now. I always thought I would die young, like because I always have wanted to have kids and stuff. But like there was always like a barrier in my mind of like it not happening. I have. I've always had that as well. Do you think that's just our minds? I, it's just like, you never really thought, like, I always say this, like you always planned to be 30 years old or to graduate high school or college, but you never actually thought that that day would come. Exactly. That is frightening. That's how I've kind of always felt too. Same. But, and I'd be like, am I a psychic or do I have anxiety? I think it's a normal thing feeling when you're young. <laughs> Brittany's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like I well, but I didn't think that I would die. I just I almost felt like I would always be young, young. you know, like yeah. I just never thought that I would get to 31 years old. It's hard you know? to picture yourself ever being 30. Yeah. yeah. Damn. <laughs> 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 I can't <laughs> What about that you, Britt? Uh, no, I have no secret hunch about how I will die. That's good. If somebody could tell you right now, would you want to know? No. Fuck no. Would you no. want to know when? No. Fuck no. If I think you had to choose how or when, which would you pick? When? Probably when. I think same. I think Never. My, my grandparents lived like really really full life like my dad's grandparents lived really really full lives until their 90s like That's my great. grandma was still playing tennis in her 90s oh holy shit um and my grandpa was still like so witty and sharp even in his 90s like even like on his deathbed he was still like witty oh, I and love sharp that. so That's maybe amazing. that's also part of it like i just have something good jeans <laughs> my grandma is 76 and still works a full-time job oh wow that's crazy yeah my grandma's like 83 and is calling the fire department every week <laughs> <laughs> um, okay number nine seven oh. for what in your life do you feel most grateful for I think definitely the people in my life and especially lately and moving away has just really made me more grateful. I think for all the people in my life, because like I always like used to, I think superficially, you know how you're just like, I'm thankful for my friends and family. Mm -hmm. But like lately, I've been really thinking more deeply about like each of my connections with everybody in my life and like just how special it is and how not everybody has that. Yeah, yeah. me too. A lot of times I feel like yeah, I don't have enough friends or, you know, stuff like that, but I'm lucky to even have the friends that I do. Mm -hmm. I have people that I can go to with any problems. And I'm also just so grateful that my whole family is so close, mm -hmm. especially because yeah. I don't have that many friends too. Like my family is my friends. So yeah, it's nice to have them. Yeah. Like your siblings and stuff. It's like, yeah, Sometimes my siblings. I think about, like, like, what if I was an only child? Like, yeah. Oh my god, I know. I just thought there's like so many things too that you get to like learn from all the different relationships and like. Mm -hmm. I guess the other thing that I'm grateful for in terms of like relationships is like the growth over time mm -hmm. in the relationships mm -hmm. and like being able to connect deeper or like learn more from each other or. That's so true. Yeah, um, especially with friends or partners. Because mm -hmm. you start, yeah. like, not really knowing each other. Like, Brittany sent me this weird voice memo on <laughs> Instagram. That's how we <laughs> – it wasn't weird, but I thought it was weird. <laughs> but now we're also – like, it's just – you yeah. don't – you forget to look back at, like, where you started and, like, how – Yeah, and then how you just suddenly feel comfortable saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's really cool. Also, the dogs, like, I am actually very thankful for them because, like, that's what I've envisioned my whole life. And then I just look at them sometimes and I'm like, oh, wait, you're, like, real. Yeah. yeah. And you, like, like take it for granted. For but, like, yeah, yeah. when you were younger, like, you're so you annoying wanted... sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on to set two. Um, number four. What do you value most in a friendship? Honesty? I was going to say that too. I think thoughtfulness. And like, thoughtfulness is great. Like, in the way where you, where like friends just kind of think about you if something like comes up or like, you know, they see a funny meme and they like send it to you or. Mm-hmm. They organize something like for your birthday or just something special that would like mean something to you. Yeah, like where you know you're like cared for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think, yeah, like honesty, like of me being able to be honest with them. Yeah, also, that's what I, I was going to say. Like be, yeah. having someone that I can say anything to or like talk yeah. through anything yeah. with and that they're going to listen. Yeah, not be judgmental. Like feeling comfortable to talk about anything like that's so important agreed because i don't feel like that with a lot of people at all yeah yeah that is really good i saw this tiktok of this girl she was crying and she was saying that she misses having a best friend Mm -hmm. and like she was just like if you have a best friend like just don't take it for granted because i don't have that right now and i don't have anybody to like even talk about this with you know like when you're going Mm -hmm. through a hard time and yeah, I just am lucky that I have best friends. Yeah. It's so true. Um one. Maggie. If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to know anything. I want to know if and how I'm going to find my person. Would you want to know that? Yeah. So if they said like dating app, <laughs> then like That's would you start would really be, like, pushing out dating app more? Yeah. Yeah. Or if they said like bar, then you like out of the bars all the time. Yeah. That That's is interesting. so interesting. I don't know if I would have wanted to know that. Because, like, then what if any person you meet at the dating app, you're like, is this the person? True. But then you're also kind of, like, just more open-minded to it. Because then you'd be like, yeah. okay, I'll go on a date and just see if we connect. Yeah. And then you're That's, like, I think how yeah. I would take it. Mm-hmm. I think that I would like to know just, like, that I can continuously, like, overcome, like, hard shit. Like, just knowing, like, shit's going to happen and, like, just seeing myself on the other side of, like, whatever hard thing I go through is. That's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I could just see myself, like, as an old lady, just, like, happy and then just know, like, okay, anything that happens throughout life, it'll be okay. Yeah. It's just so – I think I get so down in the moment. Like, even, like, this past week when I was, like, messaging you guys, I was, like – the fuck is happening like i yeah just understand. and being able to just know like okay i got i i'm going to get through it like it's just mm-hmm. and you'll probably feel that way and i'll probably again, feel that way and, and then like, get through it again yeah yeah that's one of the things in the studs documentary he says there's three constants about life that will always be and you cannot change pain uncertainty and constant hard work and like that kind of makes you feel better almost like that that will always be a thing that you because I think a lot of people are like once I get to a certain place or once I achieve this certain mindset or whatever then I'll feel good but like Mm -hmm. knowing that that will just always be a thing and it's just something that we'll always have to work on kind of makes you feel better almost (laughs) yeah yeah is there anything that you would want Maggie I think what you said like yeah just a picture of knowing that I could get through everything Because I don't think I'd want to know, like, how successful I get or, like, things about work or about children or anything like that. Yeah. I think that it's kind of funny, like, 
listening to this question and then thinking back like to what my previous self might have said when I was like 22. Mm. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. What do you think you would have said? I think I probably would have wanted to know like how much money I was going to make or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I probably I like would have wanted put to a know cap at it or like yeah, I don't know. honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, cause then, yeah, I I don't know if I would want to know that because if it's not, yeah, then it might make you just like depressed, yeah. or or if it's like so extreme that it might make you, I might get like lazy of being like, well, I'll get there one day. Yeah, I would have wanted to know how many times I was going to meet Lady Gaga or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting. Like, I've always known I was going to make over six figures. Like, I just always knew that. And so it was just kind of like this inevitable thing that I'm just going to work until it happened and like be on. I feel that. Do you know? Yeah, I've always felt like that too. So I guess, I don't know. I guess it would have been like m- probably more motivating to me because I probably would have just kept like working and grinding until uh-huh. I got there. Interesting. Number nine. What roles do love and affection play in your life? These like really make you think. I don't know. You have love and affection in your life. I thought I'm. This question confuses me. How do you answer that? Like, what do you, what are you guys saying? (laughs) What do you mean? What roles do they play? That's like I don't know. It's worded in a confusing way. Maybe like, what does it mean to you, or like, what impact does it have on you? Like it. We feel loved. Yeah, I, don't I don't really know, know how to answer that. Either. <laughs> well, the way I'm kind of like thinking about it is like, love is like from all of my like friends and family, mm-hmm. and like how ha- knowing I'm loved and like knowing that I can like love other people and like give love, like makes me feel really connected to people. Versus, like, affection is just, like, the outward expression of it. So, I guess, Mm -hmm. like, almost, like, if I didn't have that, like, I'm bigger. I would say I'm a pretty affectionate person in terms of, like, I love giving hugs. Like, I love, you know, being close to people. And so, I feel like if I didn't have that, I don't know. I'm not a very affectionate person, I feel like. I'm not either, but I don't know why. Same. I am with Cameron, but like even friends, like it's like weird to hug like my closest best friends. Not like weird. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cause like I am affectionate. Like I am very like touchy and lovey, but I don't I don't know. I don't know what the fuck this question means. <laughs> yeah, what roles do they play? I don't understand what that means. I think you gave a great answer, but <laughs> yeah. Good job. Retweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Set three. Number 10. Your house containing everything you own catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have a timely you have time to safely make a final dash to save one item. Oh, what would it be and why? I have like all of our like photo scrapbooks things together in one area. So like I've already thought about this. <laughs> if there was a fire, what I would do, I'd probably grab those. Honestly, all I care about is my pets. Like everything yeah, else. Everything is... else burn. I think I would probably save my memory boxes too. I have a couple of memory boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have things from like elementary school letters and yeah. Things. Yeah. Like cards. Yeah. Yeah. So many cards. I think there's just, like, so much, like, good things. That's a, like, we've talked about this before when it comes to, like, taking pictures and videos to Uh remember them or, like, living in the moment. And there are a lot of things I forget about because, like, I know life passes by. So I'm so happy that I have little clips or, like, photos to remember them by. But, yeah, I love that. I don't really understand when people say they would grab, like, their phone or computer. First of all, everything's in the cloud, I feel like. <laughs> no, that's what I was <laughs> thinking. So I was like, oh, true. I don't really need my phone. Because I was thinking I would take my phone, but... In this scenario, I was imagining my phone already being in my pocket. <laughs> Maybe my hard drive. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. With yeah. all of our podcast episodes. On <laughs> okay. Oh. Number six. 
Is this mine to read? Yes. When did you last cry in front of another person by yourself? Question mark. I cried yesterday on the way home from the airport after dropping off my parents. So Cameron was in the car. And then I cried saying goodbye. And then I cried when I left Arizona the last time. I cried yesterday watching Dead to Me <laughs> by myself. I don't, the last time I cried in front of someone. I definitely know I cried like in front of everyone last Christmas. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've cried in front of anyone since then. It's a hard times. Yeah. I think I probably cried last in front of Joe this week, just being like stressed out. And then I definitely cried. What show is it though? I cried in some show. I was like really I cry in every show. <laughs> I cry at TikTok every day. <laughs> really i'm not well, yesterday i cried because there's this dog having a seizure and oh it my was god so, i hate seeing those oh my god like every single day i cried to tiktok either happy or sad <laughs> was yours with like ever feeling just a lot and overwhelmed Brit? yeah i was just feeling like overwhelmed with all the different things happening in life yeah isn't it I crazy it's- like you're living your dream but like you just like I'm the same way, like crying or overwhelmed or stressed about it instead of being like, I'm doing what I was dreaming about a year or two ago. Yeah. I actually have this, this is a very off tangent thing, but I wanted to share this. So you, you've you asked me before just about like how I'm so positive or like how I can like always have a positive spin on things. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like a really great thing. And I'm so happy that I it's like a default in my brain but one thing that like I have been working on and it is like a negative component of it is like and it has like helped me in some ways but also like really hurt me in other ways is like not feeling my feelings Mm -hmm. when something happens Mm -hmm. so something like bad was to happen like it's great that I can coach myself through it and like kind of bring myself out of it and seeing the positive side of it but like what it had done until recently is like I just kind of push my feelings aside and don't Mm -hmm. like feel sad or feel upset or feel um depressed or feel like annoyed or something or frustrated or Mm -hmm. overwhelmed so I've been like what I'm trying to do more is like feel what's going on and then let myself let my brain like trigger the positive like side of things yeah instead. that's great it's so hard to do that yeah like because even i think when i think i'm letting myself feel i'm still not yeah i just wanted to share that yeah yeah no that's good number four me i think so <laughs> do we, how do you want to do this one? Oh, tell your partner what you like about them. Be very honest this time. Saying things that you might not say to someone you've just met. Go ahead. Compliment me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like huh. unique ones. Give I me, know. Give me a second. Brittany, I feel like you have a way of like really making everyone in your life or talk to like not only making them feel like understood but like fired up like not only like increasing their confidence but like almost giving people hope about their life that they wouldn't normally have and I think that that's like such an amazing quality that you have that you can do that to people and it seems like easy or like it looks like easy to you like how Beyonce sings and it looks like she's just like barely trying and she's just doing an excellent job. That's how I feel about everything you do. Thank you. That's You're really welcome. special. Hmm, Devin. <laughs> I know this is hard. Especially cause like there's no, uh, top it. Like there's no, yeah, like it can be anything. to pull from. Yeah. 
I think that you guys have a lot of things in common. Like the things that I like about both of you are yeah, like a lot of things that you share. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I like Devin, I feel like the same way, but I feel like with you, you make people feel very understood more and like, like they can relate to you mm-hmm. and that you like, you're very good at being vulnerable and not a lot of people are good at being fully vulnerable and themselves. Yeah. I, think both of you are so good at like go doing what you set out to do and like not letting anything hold you back which is such an awesome quality and that's nice it's important it's like what you need to do to like be successful in what we are doing but yeah like you're both just so passionate and that's what I look for in friends, I think, is, like, somebody who's, like, really passionate about something. hmm And, like, when we can be passionate together. Mm-hmm. Sounds yeah, like- fun. I love that about our friendship. Maggie, I think for you, I really, like, admire your vulnerability in, mm-hmm. like, the way that you are able to, like, share that online and, like, in – the podcast I think it's really like inspiring and probably like almost inspires people to change their lives in different ways too just especially with like talking about mental health or even just like just sharing about everything that you do on a regular basis and I think it like probably inspires a lot of people to like be more open and like be more themselves because you really don't hold back anything that's like you you know and I think there's like a lot of people just like shy away from bringing their full authentic 130 percent themselves That's to the nice. table i literally you feel both, itchy, like i keep getting compliments <laughs> you both are also just like so easy to talk to and like accepting of anyone you know yeah i feel the same about you guys yeah and Devin, i'm trying to like describe like when we met in person I like you're obviously amazing and like the person that you present online is really amazing but like you're one of the coolest freaking people like and I wish like more people could like meet you in person and like there is a connect like you do bring that online but like I was like fuck why don't you live here like I I was like, like and I always felt that but like even more so when I met you in person and there I'm like trying to put my finger on like what it was that's I think so too. interesting. I think that potentially it could just be like the way that you go with the flow with things. You are and very good at them. <laughs> you are open to like trying new things and like I you're very brave. Yeah. Wow, thanks. I don't feel like I am. No, you are. Like you definitely are. You really work past any anxieties that you have and like push through it and that's not something I do a lot of the time yeah you probably don't give yourself enough credit for like all I know I'm like wow I wish that I felt this way about myself that like you I would be way cooler if I thought I was actually cool (laughs) I I literally said this to Joe I was like I like wish she lived like next door I know when you left and I think, you know, maybe it's, like, something about your energy. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm going to keep Yeah, and, like, the because, connection. Like, it's it's yeah, the ability to feel connected to people. Like, yeah. Yeah, I feel yeah. that all the time. I think, yeah, I think that, too. And I haven't even met you in person. I'm always, like, damn, like, why did I have to move away <laughs> as soon as I met you? I know. Yeah, yeah like, I, whoever gets to be your friend in person, like, damn. I'm just going to whisk you away to Colorado <laughs> and make Maggie move here. <laughs> Brittany, you're so easy to talk to. And, like, since I'm mm-hmm. a shy person, like, I don't know what it – I guess we just have – we just connect. But, like, when even – like, remember that time last year you wanted to do a FaceTime and talk about, like, holiday campaigns? Yeah. I was so nervous because, like, I had never just talked to you by myself. Yeah. And, like, we just – it was so easy and we just talked and – like that was really cool. I don't have that many connections with people. So 
Yeah. Cute. I agree. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys too. You love me. I like I did just get teary. <laughs> I know I'm like not cry- <laughs> not crying. I love doing like every other week episodes, but I also just love being able to catch up. Yeah, me too. Um <laughs> this one I just randomly did it again, but it's like pretty much the same question. Um I kind of just pick too if you want. If you were to become a close friend with your partner, please share what would be important for him or her to know. This is hard because I feel like we know all those things about each other kind of already. Like, I'm trying to think of things about me. Like, you guys know I need, like, plans. <laughs> you know I need, like, reassurance. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like this would be for, like, anyone. But it would be that, like, I'm a work in progress. That, like, I love myself for who I am right now. But, like, there's always things that I want to work on. So, like, if there is something that was to, like, bother somebody, like, I'm an open book to work on it. And it's something I want to, like, have a conversation about to improve upon. That's a very good quality. Yeah. Not a lot of people are just very shut off to that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I agree. I guess like my biggest downfall is like when I like get paralyzed and don't do the things that I need to be doing. So it's I guess it's important for my friends or anybody to know like when I don't reply or like yeah, do things like that. It's not because of them. Yeah. Cuz I shut myself out. <laughs> I know. I was going to say I I think I said that this week too. I was like I am trying to get better at, like, sharing when things, like, happen. Mm -hmm. Where I'm, like, holy fuck, I can't do anything instead of, like... Do you feel like like you're good with that with Joe, at least? Or, like, other people? Or do you really keep it to yourself? I guess I... Yeah, I don't know. I think that Joe picks up on it. Yeah. Because we're in person. But, like, I did this with my coach, too, where I'm, like, I all shut, shut off. Like, when I'm just not able to, like do something and so instead of being like hey i need help i just don't reach out Mm -hmm. i don't either i want to figure it out by myself yeah same yeah i don't know but it's i i just realized like how like just especially like in our friendship like it's so important for me to share like whenever i possibly can like hey i'm like just going through it right now like i don't have to like elaborate on it or anything just like this is what's going on instead of just like not responding yeah and we like to know what's going on yeah yeah and help if Definitely. we can or just sympathize when we can't don't know what to yeah. say <laughs> yeah because sometimes it helps you so much just to put it out there and then yeah. you're like yeah. like once you say it then you're like oh wait other people feel that way too i'm not fully alone like in this emotion yeah, yeah. And that's why I get, like, I, I'm, i like, it helps me to, like, just say it because then I can start processing it faster versus waiting and letting it, like, just fester. Totally. Not and you guys always, like, say the things that I need to, like, I know I need to think, but mm-hmm. I'm not. So then, like, you guys will say it and, you'll, and I'll be like, okay, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. Just to be grateful for, like, what I have going on because I'm always complaining about, like, brand deals that I don't get or something or, like, feeling like I'm a piece of shit to you guys. Yeah, and you're not at all. (laughs) It's my period hormones. Wait, there's one I want to ask you guys. Yeah, I was going to say, is there any other ones you guys want to ask? Yeah. If you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you are now living? Why? Oh, my God. I think that is such a good question. I would spend all the money that I have just traveling with my family and friends. Same. That's what I was going to say. It's like, I would just, I guess, not work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would probably but you also work because I like, yeah, I, I can't imagine not doing this. I would be like, oh, I definitely be such would great social media it. content, all of it. Oh, for sure. If I got cancer, I'd be <laughs> like, yo, hey, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would, like I just was talking about, I think I would just, like, figure out how to process things faster. How would you do that? 
I don't fucking know, really. Like, what do you mean? What would you want to process? Like, just, just when shit happens, like, my – a big, like, thing I do is just kind of, like, shut off and I, like, mm-hmm. sit in it and I avoid – of basically avoidance i avoid it and so i think if i only had one year left to live i would like i think i would naturally probably just like figure out a way to process things better yeah and just like move past it so it's like not affecting one or two days it's you know yeah you day or like an hour yeah and if you knew you were gonna die you'd probably just naturally want to do that more because you'd be like yeah. i want to harp on this one thing for days mm-hmm. this this question is so good because it's like we can live like that right now there's no like i know and so it, it's kind of like inspired me honestly like to be like okay because another thing i do that's annoying as hell is like joe will do something and like i'll share like how i'm feeling about it and then he apologizes and for some goddamn reason sometimes i'm just like no um, i have to be mad still like i am going to be mad it is my god-given right to be mad about this same. and it's like why Dude, what are you same. doing what are you proving like you we'll fully apologize? we'll fully resolve any issue and like we'll just be sitting there like after it's resolved we hug everything everything's good and like i know in my mind it's good and like i have the like i'm not able until the next day almost oh, to recover it annoys me so much. It's this is 2023 will be the year that I figure that out. I haven't been like really wanting to get better at that. Do you guys oh, think that there's anything so that dumb you're... that happened? Sorry, <laughs> I'm just like no. Go ahead. Why would I sure. let it? I think it was something to do with like skiing. We would like we. I did something happened, and then like he like apologized, and then I was just sitting in the car on the drive <laughs> for like an hour, looking out the like, window. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really gonna let it ruin the rest of the night. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's so. I mean, every time it's just so hard to get yourself out of that feeling in your body. Like, yeah, logically yeah, you can think like it's fine, but like it's like having anxiety. Like it can't just go away when mm-hmm. you're mad. It doesn't just. You're not just in a happy mood all of a sudden. Yeah, and that's what it feels like. Is like I can feel like that almost similar feelings of anxiety like in yeah. my body and stomach and like restlessness. Yeah. yeah. Um. Is there like anything that you guys are like haven't told somebody that you really wanted to tell them, or like anything that you've been holding on to, where like if you had a year to live, you'd be like, "Oh my god, I need to go tell this person something." I don't know. I think that I've been like actively trying to do this, but like when somebody inspires me, or like I'm grateful for them, or like something happens and it reminds me of, you know, like this, um, she's like kind of my nanny growing up Mm -hmm. and more like an older sister, like as I got older and she's given me so much different, like wisdom and pieces of it, of pieces of advice over the years. And just yesterday I texted her, I was like, Hey, I'm so grateful that we like, you shared this with me. And, you know, so I'm, I like to try, I'm trying to get better at just like actively sharing when somebody's like inspiring or like one of my best friends is a journalist and she has just had the most incredible career and just like is so inspiring to me and I the last time we like talked on the phone I told her it and you know I don't know how often I've told her in the past but I just mm-hmm. want to get better at doing that with more yeah people. I like that I find it like so cheesy to like because we usually do that on people's birthdays or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just think it's so annoying and cheesy like to do it on birthdays. But like when else are you gonna do it? Like I like I think it would be nice to try to do that more often for people. Yeah, like that's such a good point. Your favorite Devin. memories with people or ways that they've impacted your life more. And yeah, I yeah. definitely want to get better at that. And like strangers and stuff too. I love giving strangers compliments. Yeah. (laughs) That that makes your day when somebody gives you a compliment. Yeah, totally. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I think I would write like everyone a letter if I was like dying. Yeah. Is there something you've dreamed of for, uh, dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? Oh. Going to Bora Bora. (laughs) Why haven't you done it? expensive (laughs) good answer (laughs) also i really want to like take my whole family to hawaii 
Oh, yeah. yeah, that would be amazing. And like just have a big house on the beach for everyone. But again, money. But one Honestly, day. Honestly, I feel like it's kind of stupid. Well, I feel like all of this is something that I always wanted to do and then ended up doing. So I guess that's part of it. But like YouTube, I guess, because YouTube is always the thing that I wanted to do first. And mm-hmm. I would still love to like be consistent about that and make more YouTube videos. Do it. What's kind of prevented you from doing it more consistently? It's fucking time consuming. Yeah, I guess so. But it's all just excuses, I guess, you know, because it's like I'm making content for other places. So what is really the difference? I guess that it feels more high production or high quality. Like I need to try harder with it. So then I just don't. Yeah. Everyone's saying YouTube's going to be the best social media platform again. I think it always will like hang on somehow. Like I think they've figured out just the platform well and the way that they're with creators and everything yeah it's been around for a long time like Mm -hmm. it was was it before twitter or like around the same time oh before like remember like the the first viral youtube videos like remember the shoes video (laughs) yes let's get some shits like all of that stuff or like end of z world and like all of those stupid like yeah like and those it were like when i was in elementary trends. school yeah yeah i don't know also i guess writing a book and opening like a physical location of some type of business i would like to do but those are both money you're working time, towards I guess. them yeah yeah i feel like i'm making active steps to work towards them yeah right right did you say <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I feel like this was, like, the the big dream. My big dream was always to be, like, my biggest, like, scariest dream was always to be, like, a VP or, like, a CEO of a company. Uh-huh. And now like, you're a CEO? I, now I am a CEO. Um, my next big thing, though, is real estate investments. Mm. Yes, like that's a great one. Building out a real estate portfolio, but it is money (laughs) no it's not really money it's more just like how am I gonna do this like Like overwhelm yeah you need to learn how to do it yeah like I think that there's just a lot of different like ways to do it Mm -hmm. and like deciding if I want to do like Airbnb or if I want to do like long-term rentals or if I want to be you know there's so many different things you can do with it and I think that's where I get kind of like Mm-hmm. I need to just try and like make mistakes along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but there's a lot bigger like margin of error with buying properties yeah. versus like starting an Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I feel about starting like a physical location business. Is like, yeah, it's just so overwhelming. Like it's just a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions you guys like? I feel like two and 11 of set three are deep. <laughs> but could be good. Devin said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> 11. That, I don't like that. I don't like it either. <laughs> I will pass. Well, nobody one. likes it. <laughs> well, like, what the... F- it, of all people in your family, whose death would you find most disturbing? Why? Well, what? Who couldn't you live without? Which death would disturb you the most? I, she listens to this podcast, so. I mean, I would pick my mom also. Me too. That's what you're going to (laughs) say. Yeah. My mom. Like, look, my eyes are getting watery. I know, same. And (laughs) the disenchanted was like kind of about mom relationships. So watching it with my mom is so sad. But I think definitely her because like, she's just like the ultimate like point in my life where I just go to her with literally anything i know that she would she's just like my person and i'm her person (laughs) so i just can't imagine not having that that would be the worst day ever yeah same mine would be like both my parents yeah i couldn't pick like one of them or the other my dad is like my best friend but like i couldn't deal with either of my parents yeah i mean yeah same 
I think though that we need to like talk about death more kind of like as a society because like it like because we're so scared of it like I've always been terrified of my mom dying like but then like if it actually came to that like I feel like lately and since my brother-in-law died it's like brought it to my family of being more open talking about death because we weren't prepared at all or like even Mm -hmm. the fucking legal shit that you need to do afterwards or and like social media accounts just like so many things that you don't talk about ahead of time because you want to like avoid the topic and act like it's not going to happen but like other cultures make it so beautiful and talk about death like it's a part of it it's like birth like we suck we make death a horrible scary thing and like sex a horrible scary thing and birth (laughs) too yeah (laughs) that is such a true thing i i definitely really admire the societies that like really celebrate lives yeah and have like ceremonies that are very like fun and happy Mm -hmm. to celebrate people's lives yeah because like grief is such a thing that everybody will experience forever but like I I didn't ever hear of it or hear people talking about it until my brother-in-law died and then like I looked into it more but like I don't know. I just feel like it needs to be talked about more. And I think my parents have done a better job now of like preparing me, I guess. Yeah. I went to a handful of funerals when I was like really, really young. And I wish that there had been like different sort of preparation. Like I was exposed Mm. to it, but I don't think I was like, I didn't understand it. They like the people that died, I didn't know. Uh I mean, like they didn't mean anything to me. And so, but I, I was so sad and I just, I didn't. Yeah. Understand I remember why. that as a kid too. Like you're looking around at everybody crying and you're like, what is happening? Yeah. So I, I guess I wish I would have like, I'm, I guess I was, maybe it was good that I was exposed, but I wish there was like more conversation around it. Yeah. Like you're saying. Yeah. Cause it certainly wasn't like a celebration. It was definitely like a bad, like this was bad, bad mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, any other ones? <laughs> I don't think so. These were good. Are we in love? I think we are in love. Oh, yeah. I think so. I hope everyone listening is in love, too. I do feel closer. Yeah. And we didn't even do all 36. Maggie's going to slowly just, like, drip these into the text thread. <laughs> <laughs> No, girl, random these- question but <laughs> i would highly recommend you got a crush you know invite them over light a candle <laughs> go through the list tell them it'd be a fun activity to do together hold hands stare into each other's eyes yeah <laughs> you might get a new date <laughs> these are like great questions though like if you oh my god if you are like newly dating somebody yeah totally it helps you get to know them better you could probably like weed out some Oh, yeah. And then at the end of the whole thing is at the end of the experiment, you're supposed to stare into each other's eyes without talking for four minutes. Oh, I've never done that with I don't like that. That reminds me of baby mama when he (laughs) does the eye contact thing. (laughs) I love that part on the table. (laughs) I like those are the movies I just wish. I know. know. Maybe it's just because they're made to be rewatched. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Bitch, you don't know my life. <laughs> That's my favorite <laughs> line. When she puts gum, gum under uh-huh. her coffee table. <laughs> Did you just put your gum under my refurbished barnwood table? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. so what funny. do you think? This is an Arby's? I wish it was an Arby's <laughs> or whatever. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> it's actually a lot nicer there. <laughs> <laughs> They're nicer people. Wait, I don't remember. I feel like Baby Mama and you, Devin, are, like, synonymous. <laughs> yeah, I am Tina Fey. <laughs> oh, Dax Shepard is so good in that, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was going to say, He's I'm so sure funny. you love it also because Dax is in it. Yeah. Um, did what is our episode, episode Mullet Man? Man? Oh, yeah. Okay. Did you? Yeah, guys. Eric and Gabby broke up, if you have not heard from The Bachelor. So, Devin but, might be dating Eric next week. <laughs> Send him the Eric his questions. Yeah. So, so pause starts, off. <laughs> start sliding into his DMs with each of the 36 Yeah. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. 
he did a Q&A over the weekend and I should have like just dropped a Do you want to go on a date? Shut up. Didn't There's still time. Okay, sure. our next episode is talking about dog mom life. Do we need questions from people Ooh. about that? We could definitely get some questions of like things people are curious about. Yeah, so if you're a dog parent or a first-time dog parent, we're going to be sharing our tips with you, things that we've learned, whatnot. So if you have any questions, feel free to DM us or email us at so glad we're friends, and we'll be back next week for that. So glad we're friends at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. Did I not say that? <laughs> so glad we're friends. <laughs> Is that what I said? Yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> okay but yeah subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts and on youtube make sure you leave a review if you haven't yet my aunt was so cute because she gave us five stars Mm -hmm. on like spotify or something but then she's like it will only let me give four stars but it's because she was like trying to rate every single episode so she already left a five-star review so like the only option was to lower it I was like, no, just leave it. Yeah. (laughs) Leave it at five stars. You can only leave a review once. So once you leave us a review on Apple and Spotify, you all good. But we love you forever. (laughs) Yeah, we love you so much. Follow us on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all the places and like this video. We love you. We love you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.